Hey guys, today I have the picks, the long awaited picks for my ninth grader. And in some of these choices, I think I've even surprised myself. So let's get into it. So if you're new to my channel, my name is Rachel and I am a homeschooling mom to three kiddos aged seven to 14. This will be my seventh year homeschooling my first year as a homeschool mom to a high schooler. I have to say, of all the curriculum that I've ever chosen, this one probably caused me the most angst, sim simply because high school, like now it counts, <laughs> if, if your kid's gonna go to college anyway. Um, whereas before, I, I live in a very homeschool friendly state, surprise, surprise, Illinois, there's a <clears throat> one bright spot to Illinois, I guess. It is very homeschool friendly and I haven't had to turn in portfolios, I haven't had to get my curriculum approved, but high school, it counts because if we're going to go to college, we have to have things in place that colleges are going to say, yes, this is enough, come to our school. You have to make sure it counts for your ACT, your SAT, your AP test exams, your CLEP exams, if you're, whatever exams you're going to be doing to prepare for college, you, you need to have certain things in place for your child. So if you haven't watched my video on how I'm planning for high school already, I will link that in the description below. And I go through how I've kind of drafted out the four years, the credits. I had to start there to determine what curriculum I was going to choose for this year. If you haven't already, check out that video. So I've tossed a lot of ideas around for high school for this year. One thing that we kind of knew that was an easy decision right off was math. This year my son did dive online math. Dr. Shorman kind of did the lessons for Saxon. My son really enjoyed Dr. Shorman and wanted to stick with that. And so we are doing Shorman math this year. I did toss around the idea of teaching textbooks because my sixth grader will be sticking with teaching textbooks this year. And one of the things I like about teaching textbooks is that it grades the work for you and keeps track and you know you just kind of print out the grade book. But here's the thing, Shorman's math does that also. He does not do that for his Saxon classes, for his Saxon lectures, but for his math that he created himself, his own program, he does keep track of those grades for you. So we will be doing Shorman Algebra 1 this year. I should add in also with the Algebra 1 for Shorman Math, that is not only a credit for Algebra 1, but it is a half a credit for Geometry. And then when we do Shorman Math next year, Algebra 2, you will get a full credit for Algebra 2 and the other half credit of Geometry. So in two years of high school, we will be getting three math credits. Love that. Okay, so I am on the Shorman website. I have the website up here, diveintomath.com, but also if you just Google Shorman Math, you will find it every time. And these are the sorts of services he has on here. His own math curriculum for high school, he also has classes for Saxon, science, he has live classes, he has prep for CLEP and advanced placement testing, and then I'm not sure what this audio adventure is, I haven't really looked into that. This is a biblical worldview, historical foundation that teaches math, math as a language of science. So he does reference God and his beliefs, and specifically, I'm positive, he probably talks even more about that in science. So my son did the Saxon math this year and really enjoyed it. And let me just show you this real quick. So Shorman does have classes all the way up through Saxon calculus, it looks like. So if you want to stick with Saxon, Shorman does have that available here but he has created his own math curriculum pre-algebra all the way to calculus. This is the prerequisites that he recommends, so getting at least through Saxon 7-6 before you may join the, 
the uh, Shorman pre-algebra. And then Algebra 1, 2, Pre-Calculus, and Calculus. And then over here it shows you what high school credits you could get for that. So Algebra 1 and 2, you're going to get a full credit for Algebra 1 and 2, but also a half credit both of those years for Geometry. Um, this is a special circumstance, I guess, maybe if you skip one of these algebras and go straight to Pre-Calculus, if that's the route you want to take, then this would also have a half credit of Geometry. And then it shows you for his courses what you would be prepared for. So once you've taken Algebra 2, you would be prepared for three CLEP tests for college. CLEP testing kind of validates what you've done in your home school. It validates whether or not your student really needs college algebra or whatever math they may be trying to CLEP test out of. You could check out his CLEP and AP prep stuff here and how he could prepare you for that. On Shorman's website, he's always got samples here so you would can fully understand how it works. So here it is, Algebra 2. You can test out a college algebra from this, which would be three college credits. And then you can see for calculus, you would also be prepared for advanced placement calculus AB for biology, advanced placement biology, chemistry and physics. So this is advanced science and math. And then just to give you another sense of what his classes are like. So when my son did his Saxon, this is what the computer screen always looked like. It looked like a blackboard and then as he was explaining it you would see the white lines being drawn and the numbers being drawn. So the cursor, it's not a live class so it's not interactive. It's dynamic though. It's not just here's a screenshot of this math problem and here's another screenshot. And it's also not showing you the teacher lecturing at you. You are seeing the math being done in front of you. So like I said, there are plenty of videos on his site where you can check out how it works. Let's see here. So if you're looking into any of these maths, go to the math that you're looking at and then there's going to be little sample videos and ex explanation for how he does his math here. So check it out. The other thing that was a really easy decision was our Latin. So my son also did Compass Classroom Latin this year. Having seen all the work that he put in this year, I gave him the choice. I said, I can just give you a high school credit and let you move on to Latin too but he wants to repeat it and make sure that he really knows it well. And I am fine with that. But he loved the Compass Classroom DVD. He loved the DVD instructor, thought he was really funny. Okay, so next, language arts, history, science. These were the things. What are we gonna do? I thought we were gonna do one thing for history and I changed my mind. <laughs> and I ended up buying this other program from Compass Classroom that I'm actually really excited about. I actually am an affiliate with Compass Classroom now because just now here I'm doing two classes with them and there are so many others on their site that I'm interested in for the future. So I will leave my link below. If you want to check that out and you decide to purchase, please use my link. A very small way that you could help support my channel so that I can continue to develop this content for you for free. It's just a small way. They have little um, trailers of all their programs so you can kind of see who the instructor is, how the program is going to be laid out. Okay, so they have so many products here really. I'm sure you've heard of Introductory to Logic. Here's the Visual Latin that we've done. This is for younger kids. They have, this is the history that we're doing. So let me click here. American history, modernity, antiquity, and then looks like coming Christendom. I'm guessing this is a history of the church. That's awesome. I would be totally interested in that. Okay, so for each of these curriculums, they, they had a channel trailer that you could watch to kind of see what it was about. So my son and I, we watched all three, the American history, modernity, and antiquity. Right here it says, creation to 33 AD, 
1600s to 2000, and then it, this, of course, is just American history. So this is what my son chose to do, probably because he's the most familiar with American history. Why do people do what they do? How and why do cultures actually change, and how do ideas actually affect them? Hi, my name is Dave Raymond, and in my American history series, we're going to be asking that very question. Down here, you can see there's 130 videos, five lectures per lesson. They are usually about 15 minutes each. There are four projects in here, a year-long portfolio. Here's a portfolio sample, drawings, whatever project they tell you to do for the portfolio. I think they have to choose a map at some point to copy. This looks like a article, yeah. So it's kind of like they're creating their own little compilation of what they've done for the year. And then there is weekly exams, no, sample lessons. Oh, so they've got videos on here of some of the sample lessons, what their little videos are. So this is five minutes. 13 minutes, so I'm guessing this is the full lesson. But if you have an auditory learner, I think this will be really helpful. I've already been preparing him. It's gonna be a few more hours of work a day, which he's already putting in a lot of hours. High school's gonna be even more, because if you watched my planning video, one credit is 120 hours of coursework. Okay, so this Compass Classroom American History program. Of all of the things that I got my son, this one is going to take the longest. We're doing a four-day school week for him, but I will explain more about that in a bit. 26 units times five is 130 lessons. Four days a week is 32 and a half weeks. I did not order the physical book. I ordered the digital, and I had this printed out at Office Depot where I had a discount, and I was able to print it at 2.2 cents a page. This is very thick. So you can see, let's see, this is front and back. It's all black and white. If it had color, I would have printed it at home. 336 pages, and then I had it spiral bound. This is literally his textbook, and then he's going to be creating a portfolio and doing some projects. But just flipping through this, this isn't just here's what happened and tell us what year Columbus came over and tell us the names of his ships. This is asking them to think more deeply about the history and the culture and what made people do the things that they did. What motivated Columbus to come over? For example, here is a lesson five, lecture five questions about the English colonies and Maryland and Georgia. It says, what was unique about reformational colonies? That's pretty subjective. What was unique about them? How did the reformational colonies understand and enjoy both stability and change? Who were the Huguenots and what colonies did they found in the Americas? Why did the Huguenot colonies fail? So this is an exam actually that I'm reading. Narrate the story of the Puritans from their stay in Holland to their colonization of America include the characters of William Bradford and Miles Standish. <laughs> Actually a little bit nervous about this history, but <laughs> oh my goodness, my son is gonna have to think like he's never thought before and he's gonna have to communicate like he's never communicated before. So I'm anxious to see how he has matured this year and how he's going to uh, make this work. Okay, let's skip over to the language arts. So my sister-in-law this year, she has a, a child who is a year ahead of my son, which is really nice because then I'm able to say, hey, have you tried this? What did you think? She actually has three kids older than my son. So I've gotten a lot of insight about high school curriculum from her. But her daughter this year did the Good and the Beautiful Language Arts and enjoyed it. it had the art lessons every unit. This has 10 units. Um, I think it has four, these are the 10 units here. It has four books. I don't have the books with me because I'm going to get them from my niece when she's done. But it has required four books, Just David by Eleanor Porter, Into the Unknown, which is a compilation, Up From Slavery, Booker T. Washington, 
and Patterns on the Wall by Elizabeth Yates. And then I think there might be some other book suggestions in here. There's an art project for every unit. This includes, again, watercolors, tracing paper. There is geography again, so I haven't opened this yet, but got him the geography cards. In fact, I should just open this. Latin and Greek root cards, so his knowledge of Latin is gonna come in handy for this course. Poetry memorization cards, so see one side of the card is the poem that he'll be memorizing, and the back side has words missing so he can test himself. I think in one of these units I saw he will be choosing a map to learn to draw. Has a rubric here to help mom know how to grade this workbook, this unit study. He has a set amount of time to complete it. He can decide how he's gonna complete it. There is a, a grammar and writing guide here just to remind him of grammar rules and, and all these guides commonly commonly confused words, how to cite sources. So for us, this is all very familiar because we have also done IEW before, and we will probably be going back to some of our sources from IEW that we've used before. In fact, for his essay writing, because my son only did one year of The Good and the Beautiful, he's not as familiar with this, whereas my daughters are starting more from the beginning, so maybe this would be more like, here's how you learned it from The Good and the Beautiful, so here's your source. My son did Lost Tools of Writing and IEW, and he's used to those checklists in that way. So I'm going to print him out some IEW checklists for his style and his punctuation um, when he's writing essays. And I'm also gonna print him out some lost tools of writing checklists. If So if he has any persuasive papers that he's writing, he would use that as well, since he's already familiar with those. And I am going to be doing an upcoming video comparing the Institute for Excellence in Writing and their program to the lost tools of writing and how are they similar and how are they different. So if you're interested in looking into those programs, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that. That is coming up sometime this summer. Science. When I was on the Shorman site poking around at the algebra, I noticed he has science too. So I started kind of looking into that science and was very intrigued by it because one thing about Shorman for his math and for his science, Dr. Shorman is a Christian, so his science is also a biblical worldview and it's a young earth creationist point of view. Dive into math website and I already clicked on the science portion so this is what comes up for the science. Dr. Shorman's science class is got all the classes down here on the side. It says assignments are embedded. It does not come with a physical textbook. Most of the assignments are going to be links to some article on the web somewhere. That's why they are embedded here. Um, vocabulary flashcards here and interactive worksheets, automatic grading and grade recording. So let me go back to the textbook assignments. I contacted the company and I think it says somewhere on here as well, but they do have lesson plans for popular textbooks like Apologia, Bob Jones, Abeka. If you would rather have a physical textbook, they have a reading plan where whatever the assignment that he taught, you can go to that Apologia book and read pages such and such and such. Okay, so going down here, he has courses starting in 7th or 8th grade with Earth Science, but there is a prerequisite here of pre-algebra or higher. And then in 8th or ninth grade, Integrated Chemistry and Physics. So this says, like physical science, and it's recommended before biology, must be taking Algebra 1 or higher. So this is the one that my son will be taking. And then just for reference, as you can see, biology, chemistry, physics, and then the advanced placement tests that these courses provide information for. So let's look into the advanced chemistry. It is only $66. However, keep in mind labs. You can come to this website and kind of look around yourself, like, just like with the math. 
There are videos here to explain how it works, all kinds of rabbit hole links where you can really dig in and see what this is all about before making a decision. Digital flashcards, reading assignments, video instructions, virtual labs. So you can get credit for labs simply by watching these dissections online. He also, I'll find this link here in a minute, he also has a link to actual lab kits that another company sells, so you can also do the labs at home. I will find those kits here in a bit. There is an additional lab wor workbook here that you would need to purchase, $33, so now we're at 66 plus 33. So this is a 32-week course, but as with Math Course for Shoreman, it's really a 12-month subscription, so you have 12 months to complete it, and if you need to extend, it'll be another $20 fee. Moving down here, I just clicked on another tab here that says Product Videos, so this is where he's really going to explain it all, and looks like this video is going to talk about what the faith-based um, part is of this. Looks like there's lots of sample videos here. But this is what I wanted to show you. So this lab kit here. If you wanted to do this with friends, if you have friends who are doing the same, or maybe you want to do this in a co-op, he is going to suggest this lab kit and you are going to be able to get this from another website. So we're going to click over here. These are required supplies that are not included in the kit. But down here for each lab is going to tell you what you're going to need if you decide to do this. Okay, so I don't know where I would buy a pocket rocket or a digital pocket scale. I probably have that, a weighing dish. But a lot of these things, they're not typical household things or maybe even not typical things you can just go to Hobby Lobby for. So if you were going to do this at home, you would probably want a kit. Some of the labs here, he says, you can't do this at home. <laughs> it's either too dangerous or too complicated. So you're just going to watch it. Such is the part for the part two here. And then over here, you can see this is what you provide to the experiment. Here you're providing 100 M&Ms and spreadsheet and so on and so forth. Oh, so it's right here. There is the link. All right, so well now you're going to this site, Nature's Workshop Plus, and you can see this kit is quite pricey at $315. So again, if you're doing this in a co-op group where you can split the cost, this these materials are going to be good for two to three students and I was also wondering how many of these materials might last for a few years so maybe if I decide to buy this kit can I save the materials that we don't need for when my daughter does this science when she is in high school or eighth grade I mean maybe I start her early on the science so this is everything that is included in the kit so I have not decided if we are going to do these experiments in person or with a friend or just watch the labs, but definitely interested in Shorman's science because my son absolutely loved his math. One other thing that we're doing this year is we are joining a co-op that is focusing more on the high school years in their classes, having some electives for them to do with friends, and they're gonna meet every other week, I believe. So my son this year is going to be getting his consumer education credit out of the year, which is a requirement for our state. The class is going to be doing whichever of Dave Ramsey's course is geared towards high schoolers. I, I'm not sure what the name of the course is, but it's consumer education, you know, money smarts. And then the second class that they're gonna be doing is like a speech and debate class that also talks about current events. So they will be using current event topics as their speech and debate topics. We're still kind of getting all these ideas together, but we are gonna be a part of that. So we're not gonna be doing school alone this year. How is my son gonna manage all his work? I did a video about the planner that he's gonna be using. So for example, on the, the language arts that I told you, he's gonna have a set amount of time. Um, we'll probably give him the deadlines, but then he will plan out in his planner 
how he's going to make that happen over the course of the two weeks or whatever. So, and then the same thing with, with these projects. When I really kind of dig into here and seeing what each week entails and deadlines and stuff, here's what I'm planning on doing with my son. And I will probably do an update at the end of the summer when I have thought more thoroughly through all of these details. But right now I'm thinking we're gonna do a four day school week. Our co-op is probably gonna be at the beginning of every other week. And then every other week I'm gonna have what I'm calling conference day. So in public schools and private schools, you know there were all, always teachers conference days where the parents met with the teacher. This is kind of my conference day with my children. Got some ideas in my head, planning that out, but mostly it's for my high schooler. I don't want him to just be off on his own, doing his work all the time and not being a part of us. He will be a part of our Bible study, which I also did a video about, how we do all of that together. Also these history videos, I will probably have my daughters and I sit in on a couple. And if they're engaging enough for my daughters to be interested in, maybe we'll do this with him every day. And then, you know, if he does science experiments, I know they're going to want to watch those too. So we will all be integrated as a family in those ways, but this conference day is really more for he and I. So for him to tell me about the books that he's reading or have any questions that he wants to go over with me or any discussion that we need to have about this history or maybe that day will be the day where we do the science experiment. So until I kind of look at the assignments across the year and figure out how they're gonna go, I, I, I'm just figuring out this conference day. And then while he and I are meeting, I am going to plan things for my daughters to do on their own. They're not just gonna have a, a day off where they can do whatever they want. They're gonna have some focused activities, but activities that they can do on their own. I think he and I are going to, we're going to need to connect. And then also on that conference day will be my kind of catch up day for making sure I have his things graded, make sure I'm entering those grades. Because again, I am not used to that. I am not from a state that requires all of that record keeping. So if you are from a state with that sort of record keeping, it, you know, it may be cumbersome for you for now but you're gonna be ahead of the game by the time he gets to high school. This is all new for me and I gotta figure out my routine there. So I thought that'll be my day to grade and catch up on that and updating the portfolios as we go along. And mom, don't let high school intimidate you. If you are still like scared out of your wits, like how am I gonna do this? Check out this video right here. High school, middle school, or this is your first year homeschooling in general, this video is going to be an encouragement to you and you can do it and don't listen to the rest of the world who says you're crazy, you're not qualified, you can't do it. You can do it. Let me inspire you. So stick around on my channel for all things high school. Make sure you're subscribed and until next time, bye.